Hello everyone, Helen here. Welcome along to this week's podcast. Uh, it's lovely to have you here. Um, I, I love sitting here chatting to you. If you're new, I live in Durham in the northeast of England, where I'm a piano teacher working from home part of the week. And um, yeah, the rest of the time I'm sitting around in this craft room quite a lot. <laughs> Not the whole time, but uh, and I do go outside as well and I do have other things that I have to do in the house. But I do spend quite a lot of hours here and I, I make all sorts of things and just love sharing with you what, what I do. And I love making videos too so that I can show you <laughs> what I do. So yeah, the question I'm asking this week is, uh, am I too old for a doll? And this was actually the title of a blog post that I read quite a while ago um, on a website called um, Flutterby Patch. And that's written by a knitting designer called Wendy Phillips. And she she designs toys. She has a, a shop on Ravelry called Dolly Time. And um, yeah, she I've made lots and lots of her patterns in the past. And uh, so, yeah, so she posed this question, am I too old for a doll? And I'm going to just read out the, the beginning of her blog post that she wrote. Knitters always say to me, I really love the little doll I've just knitted and I don't want to part with her, but I'm too old to have a doll. So I'm giving her to a friend who has children. When knitters tell me this, it makes me feel really sad. Not because it isn't a nice gesture to give your knitted doll to a friend's children, but because no one is ever too old to have a doll, especially a doll that you've put your heart and soul into creating. So, if you love your little knitted dolly, then keep her at home with you where she belongs. If she takes up too much room on the sofa, you can consider getting her a little chair of her own. So, I've always loved dolls. Uh, for as long as I can remember and uh, I think dolls were probably the things I played with most when I was a child for lots of years as well. Um, my, my little sister who's four years younger than me, Claire, uh, we, used to play with me as well and my favourite game was playing dolls schools and uh, my little sister's favourite game was dolls hospitals. So we had this standing agreement that uh, we would we, we would just take turns between either schools or hospitals. So we'd set up a school, we'd set up classrooms, we'd make tiny little exercise books and other books and set up desks and blackboards and, and things. And honestly, I, I think the games of schools probably lasted three or four days. And then we'd say, right, OK, we'll clear everything away and we'd then have a school, a, a hospital for the dolls. So we'd set up beds and we'd make all kinds of medicines and bandages and, and things and, and have a lovely time uh, playing uh, playing hospitals for a few days and then swap back to schools. Uh, we, we did play other things as well with the dolls. Sometimes we had a doll circus. Um, uh, we quite often had dolls Olympics and... Um, what else did we do? Oh yes, and, and so sometimes we would just decide to go on a big dolls picnic with all of the dolls and soft toys that we had and make lots of tiny sandwiches and cakes and things. We, we had such happy times with our with our dolls and uh, I, I find it very interesting actually that um, schools was my favourite game with dolls and I became a teacher and uh, hospitals was Claire's favourite game and she became a nurse so I wonder if it was just in us or whether you know what we were doing made us realise at an early age what it was we would like to do anyway yes so um, yeah so I thought that I would introduce you to my small family of dolls here uh, today um, I have to say I don't like all dolls uh, I don't like the I don't like the kind of dolls that have heads that are far too big for their body or eyes that are really really too big um, for the body or for the face. Uh, yeah, I am a bit particular about about dolls, and I do get where um, you know when people say that dolls just look a bit spooky because 
yeah, uh, to me, some dolls do look a bit spooky. Not all dolls, but um, yeah. And, and just as an aside, if you fancy a really creepy story that features dolls, um, there's a book called Dolly by Susan Hill. And Susan Hill wrote the story The Woman in Black, which is quite the scariest thing I have ever read. And, and the film as well, watch the film. Um, but this this uh, sort of classic gothic story called Dolly is, is quite scary too. And uh, yeah, if you like that kind of thing, I can recommend it. Yeah, anyway. Um, so, but yes, to me, I, I just look at a doll and if, if it seems to have a friendly face uh, to me, then, you know, that, that's fine. Um, I mean, I know some, some of you probably don't really like dolls all that much. And I was a little bit sad. My daughter, Sarah, she never really played with dolls very much when she was little either. So I, I sort of, you know, there was my passion there and wanting her to really uh, be like me. And uh, she wasn't really that interested in dolls. But never mind, we, we aren't all, are we? We're all different. Um, so, yeah. So anyway, so let's let's meet my dolls. And so two of the dolls that I've got here are knitted ones. So this first one here uh, is Millie and I bought her uh, a pattern for her at oh, a knitting and stitching show in Harrogate quite a lot of years ago. It was quite an expensive pattern as well. Um, I, I just it was a slightly different style to the usual doll I'd um, owned or made before. And I really liked the colours, so I did use the colours that were in the pattern. And uh, yes, unfortunately, she's been sitting on the shelf for quite a while and I've found that she's been nibbled at by moths. So she's got I've got a bit of a mending job to do on you, haven't I? And I think this was the first doll that I made that just had eyes and no mouth. And uh, yeah, I really like that. Uh, see, one of, one of my other dolls here just, just has eyes. So that's Millie and... And then this very little one here. Now, this is um, from a pattern by Wendy Phillips, who I've just been chatting about uh, her um, patterns. And th this is Bobby, anyway. And he is one of a set of dolls, and I haven't made the others in the set. I really want to. Which are were inspired by uh, Wendy Phillips' love of the Miss Reed village school stories. I don't know if you know those. I absolutely love those stories. And uh, so, yeah, so Bobby is meant to look like a little 1950s boy. And oh, he's so cute. But I think I, d I really, really do need to make him some friends. So perhaps I ought to look out the pat again and yeah, make some more friends for him. Uh, m my mum uh, is a really passionate crafter and she had a phase um, a, a while ago of making dolls and of making Waldorf dolls, which is a particular style of doll making, which you may or may not have heard of. Uh, Waldorf Steiner education is is a has a philosophy that where they like children to develop through using just natural materials, and a, a lot of it is based on using imagination and um, you know just just following really, really following where the child wants to go and what, what the child wants to learn. Anyway, so Waldorf dolls are a particular style of doll. And so my mom very, very kindly made me this gorgeous doll here. She's called Elizabeth. And yeah, I, one of the things that distinguishes a Waldorf doll, apart from the fact that it's made from all natural materials, um, is, is the shape of the head and uh where it's it's kind of a, a ball shape and then it's got an indentation sort of around the center of the head um at where which is the place where the eyes go um i think a really traditional waldorf doll doesn't even have any features on the face at all and some will just have eyes and and you know and my little one has just got a little mouth there but she's really she can reflect whatever um, emotion you want her to reflect, really. So she is really, really gorgeous, exquisitely made clothes, and um, she's stuffed with 100% wool as well. And in fact, if you were to hug her for quite a while, um, the wool inside 
uh, starts to warm up and she really, really starts to feel very soothing and, and huggable. And, um, and I can just almost uh, feel the love that went into making this doll, well, you know, when you hug your doll. Um, so she's, she is very special to me, um, you know, that, that my mom especially spent a lot of time making her for me. So, yeah, so that's Elizabeth. She's not wearing a coat at the moment, but she does have a beautiful red coat as well to match her red shoes there. So, yeah, so there we go. So that's Elizabeth. Now, uh, if you are a Waldorf doll maker, then you really, really don't want your doll to be called a rag doll, which is a different thing. Um, rag dolls have been around for a very long time. Uh, I think the oldest dolls that have been found were from about I think about 4,000 years ago ancient Egypt uh, they they made dolls that are called I think they're called paddle dolls yeah paddle dolls and they tended to be made from wood not rag um, with with lots and lots of woolly hair um, the earliest um, proper rag doll that I know of that's been found uh, was was with the a child found in a grave uh, from Roman times and this doll has been dated to sometime between the first and fifth centuries AD and yes it's fantastic fantastically preser preserved anyway so basically a rag doll is a homemade doll that um that uh, yeah it's just made from fabrics and often stuffed with just bits of fabric so, you know, something, it can be really, really basic doll. And uh, the next doll in my family here is, is I would call her a, a rag doll. And this is Emmeline. And <clears throat> I made her when I was about 20. I bought a sewing pattern for her. And uh, that was really one of the times that I was really learning how to use a, a sewing machine with the help of my mom. And, uh, yeah, so she, she is very lovely. She reminds me a, a little bit. I don't know if you remember, if you're old enough to remember Holly Hobby, but she reminds me of a kind of Holly Hobby doll. And yeah, I just love her old fashioned clothing. She's got her pinny on with lace on the sleeves and dress. And she's got a petticoat and she's got her, uh, yes, her long, long knickers with lace along on the end and a smart boots there as well so yeah so I I, I really really love her um, so it, not the first doll that I've ever made um, when when I was a child uh, one of my favorite books was uh, my learn to sew book and uh, although I haven't got my original copy I didn't keep my original copy I did manage to get a hold, hold of one a second-hand one um, a while ago and uh, Oh, I loved that book so much. I made almost everything out of it. But certainly I made all of the hand sewing projects that were in it. And um, there were a couple of dolls in there that I made uh, and I loved them. I, I don't know why I haven't kept them. Well, you can't keep everything, can you? But yes, I made Baby Billy and then Polly Dolly from, from uh, that book. And... Uh, Oh, yeah, really nice. Anyway, so you're, you're a very uh, sort of posh kind of rag doll, really. Not a very raggy rag doll. And, and then I have three dolls here, which are much more recent acquisitions, actually. Come along. Oops, don't fall over. Uh, and these three here are, uh, let's, well, I'll tell you their names first. This is Billy. And this is Rosie and this is, um, what you call Marigold. Marigold you called, aren't you? Uh, and these I bought from a, a fantastic doll maker who I came across on the folksy shop. And uh, yeah, a lovely lady called Martine, who is just so uh, brilliant at making these dolls. And... Yeah, I bought Marigold first and I was so, uh, so amazed by how beautiful she was uh, that I ordered Rosie. And then uh, I just very recently bought uh, Billy here because I thought I would like to have a boy. 
He is absolutely, well, they're all absolutely adorable. So beautifully made. If you're, if you're looking for a doll as a gift or as a treat for yourself, I can highly recommend Martine. And, and one of the things that I love about her uh, shop on Folksy uh, is that she she's kind of created a little world in which all of these characters live. So perfect if, you know, you're like me and you've got your imagination going when you, when you pick up a doll. And yeah, so all of her dolls are characters uh, in, a, in a place called Mulberry Green. And she actually has written lots of little stories about the dolls as well. So you can buy little storybooks from her shop as well about what all of these uh, little characters get up to. And uh, yeah, she's just kind of uh, harking back to the days when life went at a slower pace and children spent more time just playing and, you know, using their imaginations. So, yeah, these are really, really beautiful. And yeah, oh, there you go. Let's sit back down there. Uh, oh, I've got another rag doll here so so i think these dolls here that that martine makes are kind of um a cross between waldorf style they're waldorf style dolls and uh and rag dolls yeah a bit of both but yeah and uh, uh, this one here that i've got is properly a rag doll i think and she's a wi doll definitely not really made for children uh but uh, i just yeah i, I loved her wi is the group that I uh, go to once a month where which is for women and uh yeah so that's what that's what WI stands for in case you're not sure women's institute and yeah so she has got a very feisty expression on her face and I definitely think that she does a lot more than just making jam and singing Jerusalem so yeah love her and oh and one of one of the little doll that I've bought um, this is Ralph and I bought him from a shop that I really love called Myriad. The toys that they sell are absolutely gorgeous. Anyway, I really fancied a little this little boy uh, and he is fantastically made. It's just the sewing. It's made by hand, obviously. It has to be made by hand this small. It's just the stitches are tiny. And he, he's the right sort of size for a doll's house, actually. And, you know, if I had a doll's house. Uh, but anyway, he's, as soon as I unwrapped him, I just started imagining all the little adventures that he he might go on. And, uh, oh, yeah. Lovely. <laughs> of my family of dolls lots of you will have already met before and that is Pearl who is a crocheted doll so she's an amigurumi doll and really I made her as you may well know uh, to live in our camper van that we got last year and yeah so but 
So you, you, you've probably met her before, unless you're very new to my podcast. So I'm not going to say too much more about her, except that I do love her too. And like this first knitted doll that I made, uh, she just has eyes. No, she has a tiny nose, actually. That one hasn't got a nose. Um, but uh, yeah, she, she has no mouth and... Uh, as I've probably chatted about before, the, the idea of giving a doll only eyes or eyes and nose and no mouth is that the doll can just reflect a any emotion that you yourself might be feeling or or an emotion that you want to project onto the doll. So I, I look at I look at Pearl and sometimes she really looks very happy or she might look excited or sometimes I look at her and she looks a little bit um kind of worried and uh and even a bit sad so yeah i mean i know that's just my projection but it's kind of uh, just one of the useful things about dolls especially for children and uh yes so pearl you go there and so i've, I've been really feeling like i would like to have a go at making some uh dolls as in sewing them rather than just knitting them. And uh, so I've been watching a few tutorials and I've been gathering some materials ready for making a Waldorf doll or Waldorf style doll. And uh, I haven't quite started on um, one of those yet. Oh, I, ha I have bought, there's the last one of my family I'm gonna show you today. Absolutely gorgeous little Waldorf doll. Uh, that again, I bought from the Myriad website where Ralph came from. And yeah, so I've called her Kate. And she's actually been made in a little village uh, in Peru. Uh, and there's um, a group of women have set up a little uh, sort of workers' cooperative there. Uh, and they are producing these absolutely gorgeous dolls. And I think they've been going since the year 2000. They're, they're doing really well and they're doing all sorts of things with wool now. The And again, as with the traditional Waldorf doll, it's made from cotton and alpaca wool. And oh, she is just gorgeous, quite weighty because she's got, uh, you know, she's, she's very well stuffed. Uh, it's quite quite firmly stuffed should I say and uh, oh she is just adorable so this is the kind of doll that I aspire to making uh, but I decided to start with a little bit smaller on a smaller scale uh, so um, uh, and I, I was recently directed to or recommended a, uh, a podcast called um, The Everyday Artisan one of you lovely viewers told me about that. So I went and watched and I was immediately attracted to a tutorial making two little small dolls. Uh, so I had a, I watched it a couple of times and then I set to making it. Uh, and I'm going to show you a little video of me making them in a moment. I wasn't really very satisfied with my um, end products for either doll. You sit there. And... Uh, because, well, in the first place, the first doll that I made, I didn't properly follow the instructions from the tutorial. You know, you you try and you think you can do it one way, a different way, and it didn't work out so well. And so the thing that I didn't like about the first doll was that there's lots of creases at the base of the head um, because of the way that I created the head. Anyway, you can see that in the video. And I, I have learned from making those two and also that maybe I don't really want to make them quite so small to begin with when I'm learning what to do. Uh, but anyway, here, here's me making my two little dolls.
So I'm really looking forward to getting going on making a, a bigger doll than those two little ones. And yeah, so something like, like Kate here, although I can't imagine <laughs> being able to make something quite as beautiful as this, but I, I'm just going to be learning how to do it. So, so there we go. And I have actually got one other doll that I want to make, a project that I've had waiting to start for absolutely ages. And that is a cloth kits doll which I've got here on my lap. And Cloth Kits is a company that was founded in um, 1968. And they had the original idea that they could print the pieces for making dresses and jackets and things like that directly onto the fabric so that you then just cut out around the printed shapes. I wonder if any of you um, ever had a Cloth Kits uh, pattern or fabric and made made something. My mum was definitely a big fan of cloth kits and I'm pretty sure that I made one or two cloth kits things including one of the dolls and I was really excited when I just came across um, cloth kits again um, not so very long ago and found that they, the company had been relaunched and they had reprinted some of their traditional uh, dolls and so what you get is a, a piece of fabric uh, here with all the different parts for the doll so and for the clothes as well you just cut round them and sew them together so that's gonna obviously I am going to need to get my sewing machine out to do that and I am not a great one for getting around to getting the sewing machine out but I really really do want to make that doll as well so now that I've told you I'm much more likely to get round to doing it so uh, yeah so that's the cloth kit store as well. So yeah, just to, to round off really, am I old? Am I too old for a doll? Well, no, of course I'm not. Nobody is too old for a doll. So why why should you deny yourself something that means so much to you? Obviously, if I launched into a, a full-scale um, game of doll schools now, then I, I could understand if you thought that was a bit weird. And so and that's not the kind of thing that, that I'm likely to do now. But it it does it is a kind of a bit of a creative outlet as as well as an imaginative one you know it's there's something very special about creating a new being and and clothing it and then you know and even chatting to it as well uh, they're they're very very good friends they don't cause any hassle at all they don't they don't say anything unkind they just listen and they're, they're there and very comforting very comforting presence so yeah, so I think that's it today. I've, I've I've chatted on and on and on about this, but I will will return to my dolls, and I will I promise that I will show you um, how I get on with with making making some more dolls, and uh, I'm sure this won't be the last time that I chat about how much I love dolls. <laughs> okay then. Well, I I, I really am going to go now. So do take good care of yourself and keep nice and busy. And I will see you again very soon. Okay then, bye.